Imagine, it's 1947, and a test pilot is strapped into an aircraft that looks more like a bullet with wings than a plane. The military brass. They're terrified. Scientists, they're placing bets on whether this thing will disintegrate mid-air, because according to every calculation, every physicist who'd weighed in, what this pilot was about to attempt was impossible. They called it the sound barrier, and it wasn't just a catchy name. Engineers genuinely believed there was an invisible wall in the sky, a point where the laws of physics would say no more and tear any aircraft apart that dared to challenge it. But here's where it gets wild. One jet would prove them all wrong. It would rewrite everything we thought we knew about flight, speed, and what was physically possible. Today we're diving into the story of the Bell X-1, the jet that broke every rule of physics or did it. Let's rewind the clock to the 1940s. World War II had just ended and aviation technology was exploding, literally and figuratively. Planes were faster, more powerful, more advanced than ever before, but there was a problem, a huge one. Pilots were dying, and not from enemy fire or mechanical failures, they were dying because they were flying too fast. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but hear me out, as aircraft approached speeds around 600 miles per hour, something terrifying would happen. The controls would lock up, the plane would shake violently, and wings would literally rip off. Pilots called it compressibility, and it was a death sentence. Here's what was happening. When you approach the speed of sound, which is about 767 miles per hour at sea level, the air in front of the plane can't get out of the way fast enough. It starts to pile up, creating powerful shock waves. These shock waves would slam into the aircraft with such force that they caused catastrophic structural failure. Wind tunnel tests seemed to confirm the worst. As models approached the speed of sound, the drag would increase exponentially. The math even suggested you'd need infinite power to break through. Scientists gave this threshold a name, the sound barrier. And many believed it was exactly that, an actual, physical wall in the sky. Some engineers were convinced that supersonic flight was simply impossible, that humans would never, ever fly faster than sound. But not everyone agreed. The US military had a different idea. What if, and this was a big what if, the barrier wasn't real? What if it was just a problem we hadn't solved yet? So they commissioned Bell Aircraft to build something radical, something that would either make them heroes or make them look like complete fools. They called it the X-1. The X stood for experimental, and boy was it ever. Now this is where the Bell X-1 started breaking all the rules. First rule. Broken. Forget everything you know about airplane design. The X-1 didn't look like a plane. The engineering team, led by brilliant minds like Robert Woods, did something totally unprecedented. They looked at a bullet, a .50 caliber machine gun bullet, to be specific. Why? Because bullets routinely travel faster than sound without disintegrating. So, they shaped the fuselage like a bullet. Straight, smooth, and streamlined. The wings, they were paper-thin with just a 4% thickness ratio. To put that in perspective, typical aircraft of that era had wings twice as thick, and the tail. Conventional wisdom said it should be large for stability. The X-1's tail was small and razor-sharp. Everything about this design screamed this shouldn't be able to fly. But here's the genius part. The X-1 wasn't designed to take off from a runway. That was too dangerous and it would need too much fuel. Instead, it would be carried up to altitude by a B-29 bomber and then dropped. Just like a bomb. Only then would the pilot ignite its engine. Oh yeah, did I mention it had a rocket engine? Not a jet engine, a rocket. Four chambers producing 6,000 pounds of thrust, burning a cocktail of liquid oxygen and alcohol. This thing had enough power to accelerate like a missile. Second rule broken pilot safety was, let's just say, an afterthought. The cockpit was tiny, with fuel tanks surrounding the pilot. If anything went wrong there was no ejection seat. The door couldn't even be opened in flight. If the pilot needed to bail out, he'd have to depressurize the cabin, unbuckle, and somehow squeeze through a tiny side hatch while the plane tumbled through the air at hundreds of miles per hour. One test pilot described it as climbing into a flying bomb with a lit fuse. So who would be crazy enough to fly this thing? Enter Charles Elwood Yeager. Chuck Yeager to his friends. He was a farm boy from West Virginia who did become a fighter ace in World War II, shooting down 13 German planes. He even got shot down himself over France, escaped the Nazis, made it back to England, and convinced his commanders to let him fly combat missions again. The guy was either incredibly brave or had a serious lack of self-preservation instinct, probably both. When Jaeger was selected to fly the X-1, he was just 24 years old, and he approached the whole thing with this casual, almost cocky confidence that drove the engineers crazy, while scientists were running calculations and losing sleep over what might happen at the sound barrier. Jaeger was thinking about barbecue, but here's what made Jaeger perfect for this mission. He wasn't just brave, he was incredibly smart. He had an intuitive understanding of aircraft that you just can't teach. He could feel what a plane was doing, sensing problems long before the instruments could detect them. The test program started slowly. First came the glide flights, with no engine power. Then, they started powered flights, gradually increasing the speed. Flight after flight, 
They pushed closer and closer to that invisible wall. At Mach 0.85, 0.90, and 0.94, the X-1 would start to shake, and the controls would get mushy, but the plane held together. Each time Jaeger would report back, she flies just fine. The scientists would check their data, scratch their heads, and plan the next flight. Then came October 14, 1947. Picture this. October 14, 1947. A pilot is about to attempt the impossible, to fly faster than the speed of sound. But there's a secret. Just two days earlier, that pilot, Chuck Yeager, fell off a horse and broke two ribs. He didn't tell a soul. He knew the flight surgeons would ground him on the spot. So, with searing pain in his side, he climbed into the cockpit of the experimental X-1 rocket plane. But he hit a snag. He couldn't reach up to lock the cockpit hatch because of his ribs. The most important flight in aviation history was nearly scrubbed because the pilot could unclose his own door. The solution, a sawed-off broom handle he'd hidden in his flight suit, which he used to get enough leverage to seal the hatch. That's the kind of grit we're talking about. The B-29 mothership soared to 20,000 feet over the California desert. The bright orange X-1, nicknamed Glamorous Glennis for Jaeger's wife, nestled in its Bombay. Jaeger squeezed into the cockpit, his ribs protesting with every move. The countdown began. Three minutes to drop. One minute ten seconds. Then, release. The X-1 dropped like a stone for a heart-stopping moment. Jaeger ignited the rocket chambers. One, two, three, four. The acceleration was savage, pinning him to his seat. The X-1 shot forward like a bullet. He climbed to 42,000 feet and leveled off. The Mach meter on his dashboard started its climb. Mach 0.85. 0 0.90. At Mach 0 0.94, the violent shaking began. This was the dreaded sound barrier, the point where shock waves formed over the wings, where other pilots had lost control. The aircraft felt like it was going to tear itself apart, but Jaeger held steady, calm, confident much, said a punto nueve says. The shaking got worse. This was the war, the zone of infinite drag that experts swore was unbreakable. Mach 0.98. And then, something magical happened. The shaking stopped. The ride became perfectly smooth. The Mach meter needle jumped past Mach 1.0 on the ground. They heard it two distinct thunderous booms. The first ever sonic boom, Jaeger had done it. He'd smashed a sound barrier hitting Mach 1.06, nearly 700 miles per hour. But here, s the most beautiful part of the story. The Bell X-1 did unbreak the laws of physics. It followed them perfectly. The so-called barrier was never a wall. It was a transition. Think of it like water turning to steam. There's a turbulent, chaotic phase in the middle, but once you push through, you enter a new, stable state. The bullet shape of the X-1, its thin wings, and its powerful rocket engine were the engineering solutions to a physics problem. The scientists weren't wrong about the physics of transonic flight, they were just wrong about the outcome. They assumed the drag would increase to infinity, but in reality, once past Mach 1, drag actually starts to decrease. The flight gets smoother. The X-1 didn't defy physics, it revealed a deeper understanding of it. The ripple effect was immediate, supersonic flight went from impossible to routine within a decade. We got the Mach 3 SR-71 Blackbird, the Concorde supersonic passenger jet, and the modern fighter jets that break the sound barrier as a matter of course. The original Bell X-1, the very plane that shattered the sound barrier, now hangs in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Millions walk past it, many not realizing they're looking at the aircraft that forever changed human history. Its pilot, the legendary Chuck Yeager, lived to be 97 spending his life breaking records and mentoring new generations of pilots. The X-1 program didn't just end there. It gave birth to a whole family of experimental aircraft, like the X-2 and X-15, each pushing the boundaries of flight even further. The lessons learned from that little orange rocket plane influenced everything from the Mercury space capsules to the space shuttle. Even today's commercial spacecraft owe a debt to that groundbreaking flight in 1947. And get this, the sonic booms the X-1 created are still teaching us how to design quieter, more efficient high-speed travel. So, did the Bell X-1 really break the rules of physics? No. And that's what makes the story so powerful. It followed the rules we just didn't understand yet. The sound barrier was never a wall, it was a door, and the X-1 was the key. What I find most inspiring isn't just the aviation part. It's about human potential. Every generation faces its own sound barriers, problems that experts declare impossible. But the X-1 reminds us that maybe we re just asking the wrong questions or using the wrong tools. The real barriers aren't in physics, they're in our imagination. Chuck Yeager didn't break physics. He broke through fear convention and the limits others accepted. He proved that the impossible is just the possible waiting for someone brave enough to try. So, what's your sound barrier? What impossible thing are you going to attempt? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button for more stories of human innovation. Until next time, keep questioning the impossible.